this is another progression for handstand push-ups. So for this, we're gonna start off with headstands. Again, anybody with neck injuries, planks, and just try to get as creative as you can with planks so they have something to do while you continue to progress the rest of the class. Uh, for handstands, make sure you start off by teaching the tripod position. That's is good and sweaty, so it's a great time to do it. But you want hands in front and then their head, and that way they take the pressure off their head. So perfect, hands and then head. And then you're just gonna have them start right here in the tripod position. Pretty much anyone who can already go into a headstand is gonna do it. You won't have to say a word. And then they'll just naturally start progressing and bring in the feet all the way up. Make sure that they point the toe. Point out to them that they learn how to balance the weight on their hands, because that transfers over to head, handstands really well. And from here, you can have your advanced athletes progressing to all sorts of fun stuff. So they can do front splits, side splits, all this fancy stuff that Dustin's about to do. They can go pipe, they can go tug, all sorts of things just to keep it interesting. Now the next progression I have them do after this that transfers over to handstand push-ups is actually having them fall out of it but land into their plank. And what you can also do from there is the same thing, except this time you're going to have them do an explosive motion, getting their feet back down on the ground as quickly as possible. Start working on hand push ups on the wall. Uh, so, at this point, any advanced athletes that you have, athletes who are already aware that they have handstand push ups, they can jump directly into this kicking up on the wall and starting handstand push ups. And these are going to be strict. Anyone who is still trying to get to that point, we're going to have them with mats and they're going to do negative to mats. And if he has the strength, he can push back up. And if you have athletes who don't have that strength yet, then they just work on doing a negative to the mat. Then they'll come down and keep back up and go again. And what you're working on is that every time they do the progression, hopefully within maybe every month, they can take a mat away and another mat away. Notice you're going back into your tripod. Not here. Like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, made, I made a good point. I want you to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so from here we can make a couple different progressions. If you have guys who have a pretty good strict handstand push up, but you see that they aren't yet able to kip, and we actually have quite a few of those guys in our box right now, um, or if you see that you have athletes who have pretty much advanced beyond that and can say do over 15, somewhere between 10 and 15 strict handstand push-ups pretty easily. You just have them progress to deficits. They can do them from the ring, they can do them from the bars. You can also have them go out onto the floor and they can do freestanding handstand push-ups. Your other athletes who aren't quite there yet, what you do with them is you'll have them start working on the kipping handstand push-ups. Nope. Okay, so we're gonna start teaching the handstand push-up by starting him in the headstand pyramid. So Dustin's gonna get back into his headstand on the wall. And, but this time we're gonna actually let his hips go to the wall. So his rear end is touching the wall. His feet are down and his shins are pretty darn vertical. And so uh, I wanna make sure this is a balanced position, but I don't want him to hang out here very long. He has for the sake of this video, but literally I don't want him here more than two or three seconds. Okay, then I'm gonna tell him to shoot his legs up to the ceiling as quick as possible and then finish with his arms. Okay, when he gets to the top, you're gonna to see the only thing that's touching the wall at this point are his heels. So his, his rear end's not on the wall anymore and he's staying really stacked. So from a side view, you can see that he's very stacked, opposed to, go ahead and put your butt on the wall. Opposed to this number. Yeah. You'll see that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so you saw him stacked, only his heels were on the wall. So once again, he's gonna get upside down and find his balance cushion on the bottom. That's going to be in the wall, and this is where he's going to know if he's too close or too far from the wall. He's going to shoot up. Now that only the heels are on the wall. Now when I had him come back down, I wanted to find that same position he was at to start with. 
So we're going to search for that position and then go right back up again. If you notice when he comes back down, his shins come back to a vertical position. There's the happy zone and come back up. And there. And come back down. Just feel uncomfortable. Good. So if you guys teach them where this like fun little safe zone is down here that's really balanced, then coming back down to that place again is going to be comfortable and they'll shoot right back up. If they're unbalanced in this bottom position, they're going to be really slow coming down and it's not going to be comfortable and they're not going to be able to cycle. So um, the advanced athletes, the key to the quick cycling is that they're really comfortable at the bottom and the top. Just like um, we would say in the snatch, you know, the bottom position has got to be really solid. Same thing with the handstand push-up. They're not going to go there fast if it's not solid. 